Hey, what is going on guys, Fixer here. So today I'll be showing you how to make your footage, or your gameplay rather, a bit more epic, a bit more cinematic with a few basic tips. So you can you do this using any editing software you choose, like Premiere, After Effects, Sony Vegas, but this tutorial will be in Sony Vegas Pro 15. So this is a quick preview of what the footage is actually going to look like before and after we edit it. I'm trying to chuck in the ball there. I knocked him out. Where? Yeah, he killed a, knocked a guy out. I heard the pang of someone's knife. Yeah, two guys, killed two. I killed the team. Holy crap. Yeah, I know. I got two of them. Nice, thank you. Dude, one bullet left in my... I'm trying to chuck in the door there. I knocked him out. Where? Yeah, he killed a, knocked a guy out. I heard the pang of someone's knife. Yeah, two killed two. I killed the team. Holy crap. Yeah, I know. I got two of them. Nice, thank you. Okay, so that's pretty it. That is the effect. So without further ado, let's jump straight to Sony Vegas and we'll get on with the tutorial. Okay, so here we are in Vegas. So the first thing I'm going to do is go up to File and then click Properties. So I'm using 1920 by 1080, 60 FPS, and of course I've disabled resampling. Now this is basically the standard for gameplay, so you either want this or better. But of course, whatever you use, whatever you render your videos at, you can just use that. So I'm going to click OK, and I'm going to open up my file here, and then I'm just going to drag in my gameplay. Always click No with this little pop-up. Now the first step is to get the footage you want. Now this is a full one and a half minute clip, but obviously a lot of it's not very interesting, not much is happening, so you want to get the good stuff. So the way I'm going to do this is, I'm just going to mute these quickly. I'm going to drag across until something interesting actually happens. So for me, Somewhere along here is where I start firing my gun. So I'm firing there. We'll go back a bit. We'll start about there. So drag it to there. And then wherever, you know, it lends somewhere. You can just drag that down yourself. And there you go. So we'll drag this back to the beginning of our timeline. And then we're going to zoom in a bit. So the first thing I'm going to do here is put some simple black bars on. Really nice, easy, simple effect. We're going to do this is we're going to go up to view and then go to window and make sure we've got our media generators tab and then we want to go close this drop down go to vegas and then put in solid color we're going to just drag this above our footage here and by default this will be white so we're going to make this to separate i'm going to drag all of these down that gives us a solid black close this and then we're just going to have a solid black bar or black square above our footage. So we're going to click on the event pan crop button. And then we'll click mask. Click the box here. And we're just going to drag a box right across our footage just like that. And that'll give us the bars at the top and bottom. But obviously this is inverted. So it says mode positive. Just you want to switch this to negative. And there you go. That is it. Black bars just like that. Pretty easy. Pretty simple. That's it. Next thing we're going to do is... We want to actually keyframe this, so the way I like to do it is when the action starts, I have the keyframe fade in, or the black bars rather fade in. So we'll wait till I start shooting about there. So we'll come back a bit, start it there, go back to your event pan crop. So you want to go maybe half a second later. So I'll go to 230, that'll do. And you want to drag your keyframe there, then you want to go back to the beginning. And you need to drag this off the screen. So if we go and I'll play this back here, they just fade in from the top and bottom like that. Pretty simple and just a nice effect. Next thing we're going to do is go onto Google. You want to just type in vignette PNG. You get something like this. Just save this as PNG and then wherever it is in your folder, you can just go drag this on the layer above your black bars. And then there you go. You've got that dark corners so if i disable and re-enable you can see it gives you that nice uh, vignette around the edges i like to fade this in at the same time as the black bars gives a bit of a nicer effect they fade in together and then that's like the basic of your overlays so now what we're going to do is add some music so the way ones i like to use are nice cinematic and epic music so the one i usually use in my videos is 
something regeneration by Jingle Punks is in the YouTube audio library. So if you want to find similar ones that are completely copyright free, just go to the YouTube audio library and then look at the cinematic section. So I'll drag this in here and you can have a listen. Just lower the volume of it a bit. That's what it sounds like. Might have heard this before. So you want this uh, where it ramps up right at the beginning. You want that to happen at about the same time as your black bars coming in. Always make it a little bit louder. And then put this to order. So we play this back here. That's pretty good. Although I suppose the music's a little bit early. There we go. That's pretty perfect. Now that is the basics of it. This is what you can do in any editing software. The next touch, the final touch for me, which I think makes it look so much nicer, is adding some motion blur. So what you can use for this is RSMB or Real Smart Motion Blur. So you'll have to install this for Vegas or After Effects, Premiere. And I do have a tutorial on that, so there'll be a link down in the description below. So just go follow the tutorial and come back here and we'll add the effect then. Okay, so once you've gotten it installed, you can just go to your Video Effects tab, scroll down to R, and then it should be here. RSMB. So what we're going to do is we're going to drag that onto our top footage. Now an FYI is if your computer crashes when you try and drag this on, there's really not much you can do about that. It just means that your PC isn't quite strong enough and Vegas doesn't like it. It is a common thing that did used to happen to me and it'll also change your render times upwards of 5 or 10 times longer. It really does kill render times and don't expect to be previewing your footage with this effect running as it is just really intensive on your computer. So just keep that in mind. Now the blur amount I like to use is 0.25 and then the sensitivity to 50 but obviously it depends on your footage how much motion is going on so you'll have to kind of test around a bit with this to get it just right but this is the way I do it. So once you've just applied that basically you can just close this and your footage will have that motion blur look. So if we go to our effects here and I just enable and disable this you can see you get that blurring effect with the motion so since my character is spinning at the moment you get the horizontal blur on the stuff that's moving. But it'll, the computer realizes and can detect stuff that isn't moving, like the mini-map and the gun, so they won't get blurred. So it's a pretty nice effect, pretty simple, but it just is, as I said, really intensive with the CPU and will really drastically change your render times. But that is pretty it, guys. That is the things I do to make my footage more interesting, a bit more cinematic, and just pretty it. So if you guys have enjoyed this tutorial, remember if you do, please leave me a like down below or even consider subscribing as all the support I can get is really appreciated. Now this tutorial was viewer requested, so if you have any suggestions for future videos, please leave me a comment down below as I do read them and I do try to turn all these suggestions into videos at some point. So that's pretty it guys, thank you for watching. Hopefully this tutorial did help someone out there and yes, yeah, pretty it. So I'll see you next one, bye.